Okay, uh, welcome again to another topic for our Fundamentals of Nursing. Right now, we focus on the topic on oxygenations and perfusions. So, in oxygenation and perfusions, after the discussions, you students have able to outline the structures and functions of the respiratory system and also describe the process of breathing and gas exchange and also uh, explain the rule and functions of the respiratory system in transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide to and from body tissues and also to describe the mechanism of the uh, respiratory regulations and also identify the factors influencing the respiratory functions and also uh, we uh, identify the four major types of conditions that can alter the respiratory functions and also uh, we describe the nursing assessment for oxygenation status nursing measure to promote respiratory functions and oxygenations and explain the use of therapeutic measures and also uh, recognize when it's appropriate to assign the aspect of oxygen therapy, suctioning, and tracheostomy care to assist the personnel. And lastly, to demonstrate the appropriate documentations and reporting of the oxygen therapy, suctioning, and tracheostomy care. So, yan yung ating learning outcomes for this topic. Let's go. So first, we need to uh, identify what is oxygenations. Uh, when we say oxygenations, that is the basic human needs. The respiratory system replenishes the body oxygen supplies and eliminates waste from the body into the form of the carbon dioxide. We all know that oxygen is a clear, odorless gas that constitutes approximately uh, 21% of the air we breathe, it is necessary for the proper functioning of all the living cells. So the absence of the oxygen can lead to cellular tissue and organism deaths. So cellular metabolism produces carbon dioxide, which must be eliminated from our body to maintain the normal acid balance and then the delivery of oxygen and removal of carbon dioxide require the integrations of our several system, including the hematologic, the cardiovascular, and respiratory system. So the respiratory system that is provides the movements and transfer of the gases between the atmosphere and the blood. So kapag nagkaroon ng impaired functions of our system, anong nangyayari can significantly affect our ability to breathe, transport gases, and participate in everyday activities. Okay, before we proceed to the deeper part, we need to say to its anatomy and physiology of our respiratory system. As we said, respirat respirations, that is the process of gas gaseous exchange between the individual and the environment so it involves uh, the four components yung four components natin meron tayong ventilations or the breathing alveolar capillary gas exchange transport of oxygen and carbon uh, dioxide between the tissues and the lungs and also that is the movement of oxygen and carbon uh, dioxide between the systemic capillaries and then the tissue. So, yun yung ating uh, four uh, components of our respirations. So, punta naman tayo sa structure and processes of our uh, respiratory system. Okay, let's proceed to the airways. As you can see on the picture, uh, plus on the screens, there are uh, URT and LRT, the upper respiratory tract and then the lower respiratory tract. In the upper respiratory tract, we have the nasal cavity, the pharynx, and then the larynx. While in the lower respiratory tract, we have the trachea, uh, primary bronchi, and then we have the lungs. Well, let's proceed to the functions of the upper airways. Uh, the functions are the following. Number one, we have the transport of uh, gases to the lower airways. Protections of lower areas from foreign matter. 
uh, whining, filtration, and humidification of inspired air. So these are the functions of upper upper airways. And then the functions of the lower areas, we have the clearance mechanism, and then we have the immunologic responses, and we have the pulmonary protections and injury. In the functions of the lower airways, in the clearance mechanisms, we have the cap, mucociliary system, macrophages, and then the lymphatics. While in immunologic responses, the cell is the mediated immunity into the alveoli. And in the pulmonary protections, uh, injury, we have the respiratory epithelium and mucociliary system. So these are the functions of the lower airways. Now let's proceed to the nostril or nares. That is the opening of the nose of the face. Yan yung ating nostril or nares, yung butas na ating ilong. So that is, uh, each nostril leads to cavity that we call the vestibule. Okay? And then vibrisse, that is the hair that lines the vestibule and filters foreign bodies. So yung buhok dun sa loob ng ating ilong. And then we have the paranasal zinus, that is open areas within the skull line with mucous membrane which helps in phonations. So eto, kung makikita natin yung uh, picture on the uh, left side of the screen. So, yan yun. So, the nostril or nares, we have the vestibule, birezae, and then the paranasal sinus. Next one, we have the pharynx and then the larynx. So, the pharynx is a panel-shaped tube extending from the nose to the larynx. It is common opening between the digestive and respiratory system. So, yan yung ating pharynx. Okay, so we all know that the pharynx is shared pathway for air and food. It includes the naso nasopharynx and the oropharynx, which is uh, richly supplied with lymphoid tissue that traps and destroys the pathogens entering with the air. While in the larynx, yung tinatawag nating voice box that is the important for maintaining the airway, patency, and protecting the lower airways from the swallowed food and fluids. So that is for the larynx. And then in the epiglottis that is covered the larynx, it closes when eating, it opens when uh, speaking. So sabi ko nga kanina, during the swallowing, the inlet of the larynx or the epiglottis closes protein food to the esophagus. So, the epoglut is the open during the breathing, allowing air to move freely into the lower airways. Okay? And now, let's proceed to the trachea. So, the trachea, that is the windpipe, uh, it's about 12 cm or 4 to 5 inches long. So, carina is the point which it divides. So, below the larynx, that is the trachea that leads to the right and left main bronchi or the primary bronchi and the other conducting airways of the uh, lungs. Within the lungs, the primary bronchi divide repeatedly into the smaller and smaller bronchi, ending with the terminal bronchioles. So, uh, together, this airway are known as the bronchial tree. So, uh, bronchial tree. Uh, so, the, the trachea and then the bronchi are lined with mucosal epithelium. Okay, so the trachea and bronchi are lined with cilia and goblet cells. When we say cilia, that is a microscopic hair-like projections which have rapid, coordinated, and uh, undirectional upward motions and sweep out the debris and excessive mucus from the lungs. While in the goblet cells that is secrete 120 ml of mucus per day. So the mucus secretions and trap the debris in the respiratory tract. So this uh, cell produces a thin layer of mucus. So tinatawag natin that is the mucus blanket that traps the pathogen and microscopic particular particulate matter. So these foreign materials are then swept upward toward the larynx and throat by the cilia. Na sinasabi natin, that is the tiny hair-like projections on the epithelial cells. So, the cup reflex is triggered by the irritants 
in the larynx, trachea, or bronchi. So after the air passes through the trachea and bronchi, it enters the respiratory bronchus and alveoli where all the gas exchange occurs. Okay. And then let's proceed to the pleura. Okay. So in pleura natin, uh, the outer surface of the lung is uh, covered by a thin double layer of tissue known as the pleura. So the parietal pleura lines the thorax and the surface of the diagram. It's double back to form the visceral pleura covering the external surface of the lungs. So between the pleural layers is potential space that contains a small amount of pleural fluid that is a serous obligating solution. So this fluid prevents the friction during the movement of breathing and serves to keep the layers of adherent through its surface tension. So, palagi natin tatanda that the pleura is a serous membrane that encloses our into our lungs. Uh, the visceral pleura that is directly covers our lung. The parietal pleura lines that is the cavity of each hemithorax. And then the pleural space that is the potential space between the two pleurae. Only a few ml of serous fluid is found in the pleural space to serve as a lubricant. Next, let's proceed to the lungs. Okay, so yung lungs natin, the two lungs are separated uh, by a space called mediastinum. That is approximately, we have 300 million of alveoli in our lungs. So the received volume is the amount of air that remains into the lungs after the forceful expirations so that it prevents the collapse of the lung during the expirations. As we all know that the uh, first process of the respiratory systems is the ventilation of the lungs that is accomplished uh, through the act of the breathing. So inspirations that is inhalations that air flows into our lungs and the expirations that is exhalations as air moves out of the lungs. So, yun yung makikita natin. So, there are adequate ventilations depends on the several factors. We have the clean airways, intact of central nervous system and respiratory center, and also the intact of thoracic cavity capable of expanding and contracting, and we have the adequate pulmonary compliance and recoil. Okay, let's... Uh, see this one so we have the inspiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume we have total lung capacity and we have the pneumocytes in its inspiratory reserve volume that is the amount of extra air that can be exhaled beyond the tidal boil tidal volume while in expiratory reserve volume that is the amount of extra air that can be exhaled after a normal breath. In the total lung capacity, that is the total of four volumes, the residual tidal, the inspiratory reserve, and the expiratory reserve. While in the pneumocytes, that is the type 1, that is the line of the alveoli, and then the type 2, that is uh, for the surfactant. Okay. Next one, we have the thorax and then the diaphragm. When we say the thorax, that is the provide protections for our lungs, the heart, and our great vessels. It needs half of pairs of ribs that is bounded anteriorly by the sternum and posteriorly by the thoracic vertebrae. So anteriorly, that is sternum, and posteriorly, that is thoracic vertebrae. So the main respiratory muscle for inspirations which is supplied by our phrenic nerves and the accessory muscles for inspirations that is the sternocleidomastoid, the acetylene, para, uh, parasternal, trapheus, and pectoralis muscle. And then we have the respiratory control. In the respiratory control, we have the CNS, which is the central nervous system control, the reflex control, and then the peripheral 
control. So, in the central nervous control, that is the medulla oblongata and the pons. In the reflex control naman, yung ating cup reflex. And then, the peripheral control, that is the carotid and the aortic uh, bodies. Okay, so what are the measures that promotes the adequate respiratory function? So, number one, we have the adequate oxygen supply from our environment. We also have the deep breathing and coughing exercises. So, bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng deep breathing and coughing exercises? To promote the maximum lung expansions and to loosen mucous secretions. And also, the positioning. And then, we have the patent airway. In the patent airway, that is to promote the gaseous exchange between the person and the environment. So, what are the causes of airway obstructions? Bakit nagkakaroon ng obstruction sa ating uh, paghinga or dun sa daanan ng hangin? So, number one, we have the tongue. The tongue that is among unconscious clients to tell to fall back. We have also the mucous secretions. The edema of airways. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng rhinitis, laryngitis, or bronchitis. And then, also, we have the spasm of the airways, which is the laryngospasms and bronchospasm. And then, the foreign bodies, which is aspirated foods. And we have the fluids. And also, we have the adequate hydrations. In adequate hydrations, that is to maintain the moisture of the mucous membrane lining and the respiratory tract that is to prevent the irritations and infections. And also, we need to avoid environmental pollutions, alcohol, and smoking that is inhibits mucociliary functions. And we have the chest fissure therapy that is precautions, the vibrations, and then the postular uh, drainage. In uh, precautions, that is a forceful striking of the skin with cup hand. And then in the vibration naman, that is the series of vigorous quivering produced by the hands. And the postular drainage, that is the expulsion of secretions from the vagus lung segment. Okay, so punta naman tayo sa ating uh, postular drainage. Uh, when we say uh, postular drainage, that is a drainage by the gravity of secretions from the various lung segments. So that secretions that remain into the lungs or respiratory airways uh, promote bacterial growth and subsequent infections. They can also uh, obstruct the smaller airways and cause atelectasis. Also, secretion is the major airways such as the trachea and the right and the left main bronchi are usually caught into the pharynx where they can be expectorated, swallowed, or effectively uh, removed by suctioning. So, in a postural drainage, a wide variety of position is necessary to drain all the segments of the lungs, but not all the positions are required for our Client. So, each position in, uh, during our postural drainage will be assumed by our clients into 10-15 minutes. So, the entire treatment should last only for 30 minutes. So, prevent, ang rationale natin kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng postural drainage is to prevent the exhaustions and postural hypotensions. Gradual change of position should be observed. Bronchodilator medications or nebulation therapy is given in order to loosen the mucous secretions before the uh, postural drainage and then before meals in the morning upon awaking and at bedtime. That is the best time to do the postural drainage, not performed immediately after meals because it can cause vomiting. And lastly, we need to provide good oral hygiene after the procedure for our uh, postural drainage, okay. So as we can see on the uh, screen, so these are the postural drainage positions. Okay, so nakita nyo na from the upper lobe, from the middle lobes, and then the lower lobes. So yan yung ating mga uh, postural drainage positions okay for the adults and the other side naman ito naman po yung sa ating mga impants 
Next one, we have the bronchial hygiene measure. In uh, bronchial hygiene uh, measure, we have the steam inhalation. So, sa steam inhalations natin, there are purposes. Number one is to liquefy the mucus secretions, to warm the humidify inspired air, uh, to relieve the edema of our airways, and to soothe the irritated airways, and also to administer medications. So, that is for the steam inhalations. So, that is the uh, other bronchial hygiene measure, the steam inhalation. Okay. Uh, that is uh, independent nursing functions. Heat application requires uh, by the physician's orders. Inform the client and explain the procedures. And then, we need to place the client in semipolar positions for the maximum inhalations of the steam. And we need also to cover the client's eye with the washcloths to prevent the irritations. And also, we need to check the electrical device for, the, for us to use to prevent the injury. Place the steam inhalator in a flat, stable surface to prevent the scalding from the hot water. And place the spout 12 to 18 inches away uh, with the client nose or to adjust the distance necessarily. Okay, so caution natin dito sa ating steam inhalations that is avoid burns. So cover the chest with the towel to prevent the burns due to the dripping of the condensate from the steam. So assess for redness on the side of the face which indicates the first degree burn. Render steam inhalation therapy that is uh, for 15 to 20 minutes in order to be effective. And also, we need to instruct to perform the deep breathing coughing exercises after the procedure to facilitate the expectorations of the mucus secretions. And also, we need to provide good oral hygiene after the procedures, do the aftercare equipment, and lastly, we need to document uh, the activities that was given. And then we have also the aerosol inhalations and then the medimis inhalations. In aerosol inhalations that is done among the pediatric clients to administer the bronchodilator or mucolytic expectorants. While in the medimis inhalations that is among to our adult clients to administer also to bronchodilator or mucolytic expectorant. So, wag na tayong malilito doon. So, aerosol that is for pediatric and the medicines that is for our, for the adults. Okay. Next, let's proceed to the sanctioning. So, the sanctioning that is the perform to clear the airways from the mucous secretions. Uh, when our client have the difficulty handling their secretions or artificial airway in a place, suctioning may be the necessary to clear the air passages. So, sabi ko nga, suctioning is the aspirations of secretions through the catheter connected to a suction machine or wall suction outlet. So, even so, the upper airways, which is the autopharynx and our uh, nasopharynx, are not sterile. Sterile techniques is recommended for all the suctioning to avoid introducing the pathogens into the airways. Okay, so in doing the oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal suctionings, we need first to uh, assess the indications of uh, sanctioning. So, what are the in, uh, indications for sanctioning? The number one that is audible secretions during the uh, respirations and then the adventitious uh, breath sounds. So, that is for our uh, first assessment indications for <coughs> sanctionings. And number two, we have the positions. In positioning is kapag conscious, pag gising, it should be semi-fowlers. Pag unconscious naman hindi gising, that is the lateral positions. Kasi we all know that positions, a uh, conscious client who have a uh, functional gag reflex in the semi-fowlers, position with the head turned to one side for oral suctioning or with the neck hyper extended 
for nationals uh, nasal suctioning. So, ang rationale natin doon that these positions facilitate the insertions of the catheter and also help prevent the aspirations of secretions. While in the unconscious uh, client in the lateral positions that is facing you. So, the rationale of the positions allow the tongue to fall uh, to fall forward so that will not obstruct the catheter or the insertions in the lateral in the lateral positions also facilitate drainage of the secretions from the pharynx and also to prevent the possibility of aspirations and also we need to determine the pressure suctions equipment in order to prevent this, uh, the trauma to the mucous uh, membrane airways. In to turn the suction device on the set to appropriate negative pressure on the uh, suction gauze, the amount of the negative pressure should be high enough to the clear secretions but not too high. So, ang rationale natin doon that is to a uh, high pressure can cause the catheter uh, to adhere the tracheal wall and causes irritations or trauma. So, our rule of thumb is to use the lowest amount of suction pressure needed to the clear the secretions. So, kung makikita natin in an, an adult, we have in kapag wall unit yung gamit natin, uh, uh, it should be 100 to 120. In a child, we have 95 to 110. And for the infant, that is 50 to 92. For the portable unit naman, kapag adult, that is 10 to 15. In the child, that is 5 to 10. And then the infant, that is 2 to 5. So, yan yung uh, for uh, pressure of suction equipment. Okay, choose the appropriate size of the sterile suction catheter to prevent the trauma to mucous membrane airways. So, appropriate size of the sterile uh, suction catheter. So, kailangan natin yun. Okay? So, uh, to prevent the trauma, trauma to mucous membranes of our airways. So, uh, for adult, that is 12 to 18. For the child, is 8 to 10. And for the infant, that is 5 to 8. Use uh, sterile gloves uh, or apply an unsterile gloves on the non-dominant hand and then sterile gloves on the dominant hand. So, yung rationale natin doon, the sterile gloves can maintain the sterility of the suction catheter and then the unsterile glove prevent also the transmissions of the microorganisms to the nurse. And then, with your sterile glove hand, pick up the catheter and attach it to the sanctions unit. So, yun, yung ating use of sterile gloves. And also, consider the length of the catheter. In so the considerations of the length of the catheter, it should be have the measure from the tip of the client nose to the earlobe or about 13 centimeter inches for an adult. Okay? So... Yun. And then, we need to lubricate the catheter to reduce the friction. So, uh, lubricate the catheter tip with the sterile water, saline, or water in soluble lubricant. So, ang rationale natin doon, that is, this reduces friction and eases insertions. And also, uh, remove oxygen with the dominant hand if appropriate. So, without applying naman yung ating uh, suction, insert the catheter into the either nearest and advance it along the floor of the nasal cavity. So, ang rationale lang natin doon, this avoid nasal turbinates and never force the catheter against the obstru obstruction if one nostril is obstructed and try again to another. So, sa lubricate natin, kapag nasa pharyngeal suctions, that is tip water, soluble uh, lubricant. And then, the oropharyngeal suction naman, that is tip sterile water or PNSS. And then, apply the suction during the withdrawal of the suction catheter. So, never during the insertions to prevent the trauma to the mucous membrane. So, uh, and then, apply suctions 5 to 10 seconds. Maximum na natin doon mga anak ng 15 seconds. So, over-suctioning causes the hypoxia and 
bagel is the new lay shots. Okay, so uh, uh, apply the, your finger to the suction control to start the suctions and gently rotate the catheter. So, uh, gentle rotations of the catheter ensure that all the surfaces are rich and prevent the trauma to any one of the respiratory mucosa of the prolonged uh, suction. So, back it 5 to 10 seconds lang while slowing and withdrawing the catheter. Then, remove your finger from the uh, control and remove catheter. So, intermittent sanctions reduces the occurrence of trauma or irritations to the trachea and nasopharynx. So, sanctions attempts should only for 10 to 15 seconds. During this time, the catheter is inserted, the suction applied and is continued and the catheter removed. Okay, so hyperventilate the clients with 100% oxygen before and after the suctioning to prevent the hypoxia. And also allow 20 to 30 seconds interval between each suction to bring up the mucous secretions into the upper airways and to prevent the hypoxia. And then we need also to uh, provide uh, oral and nasal hygiene. And then dispose contaminated equipment articles safely. So use the sterile suction catheter for the episodes of the suctionings and assess effectiveness of suctioning. And lastly, we need to decode. Uh, we need to documentations. So in disposing the contaminated equipment articles safely, that is, uh, uh, for example, ito yung mga dispose ng catheter, gloves, water, and water containers. So rinse the suction tubing as needed by the inserting the end of the tubing into the use of the water container. And wrap the container around your sterile glove hand and hold the catheter as the glove is removed over it for the disposal. Okay, we have the incentive spirometry. In incentive spirometry naman, ang concern naman natin dito is enhances the deep inspiration. Okay, and then in the intermittent positive pressure breathing, that is ordered for children adult with chronic lung conditions. Most often used for clients with cystic fibrosis. So administer oxygen and pressure higher than the atmospheric pressures and assist also the clients to breathe more easily by liquefying the mucus. Okay, next one, we have the supplemental oxygen administration. So, ang indication lang natin dito, into the uh, supplemental uh, oxygen administrations, we have the hypoxemia. So, yung hypoxemia natin, there are signs. We have the restlessness, increased pulse rate, rapid shallow respiration of dipsia, lightheadedness, nasal flaring, substernal or intercostal retractions and we have the cyanosis that is already a late sign. Uh, pag sinabi po natin hypoxemic mga anak, that is the low level of oxygen into the blood. Okay? So that is hypoxemia. So ang initial sign lang na makikita natin dyan na may hypoxemia that is restlessness and then the late sign that is cyanosis that is for the late sign. Okay, let's proceed to the low low flow administrations devices. So, meron tayong nasal cannula, meron tayong simple face mask, meron tayong partial rebreathing mask, we have non-rebreathing mask, we have crofate, and then we have the oxygen tank. So, ito yung mga low flow administrations devices that we have. In oxygen uh, delivery system, that is the low flow and high flow system are available to deliver the oxygen to our clients. So the choice of system depends on the client's oxygen needs, comforts, and development considerations. So low flow system deliver oxygen by small bore tubing. So the low flow administrations devices includes the nasal cannula, 
face mask, oxygen tents, and transtracheal catheter. So, with this type of devices, room air is also inhaled along with the supplemental uh, oxygen. So, as the result, the fraction of inspired oxygen will vary depending on the respiratory rate, tidal volumes, and then the liter flow. Let's proceed to the first one, the nasal cannula. It should be a uh, uh, the nasal cannula is the most common and inexpensive device used to administer uh, oxygen. So the nasal cannula is the easy to apply and does not interfere with the client's ability to eat or to talk. It also relatively comfortable, permits some freedom of movement, and it's well tolerated by our clients. So. It delivers relatively low concentration of oxygen, which is 24 to 45% at the flow rates of 2 to 6 liters per minute. So, above 6 liters per minute, the client tends to swallow the air and it's not increased. So, it should be the... Limitation of the plain nasal cannula include the inability to deliver the higher concentration of oxygen and that it can be drying and irritating to the mucous membrane. Okay, so reservoir of our uh, nasal cannulas are oxygen conserving devices and also called oximizer oxygen or conserving devices. So that is used primarily in the home setting. So our clients with a COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, it should have 2 to 3 liters per minute. So, if ventures mass is not available. Okay? So, yun yung ating for nasal cannula. Punta naman tayo sa simple face mask. So, face mask that covers the client's nose and mouth may be used for oxygen inhalations. Most masks are made of clear, pliable plastic that can be molded fit to our face. They are held to the client's head with the elastic band. Some have metal clip that can be bent over the bridge of the nose for the snug fit. So exhalations, ports on the sides of the mask allow exhaled carbon dioxide to escape. So some masks have a reserve bags which provide higher oxygen concentrations to our client. So the simple mask or simple face mask delivers oxygen concentrations about uh, 40 to 60 percent at liters per flow of eight, 5 to 8 liters per minute. Or pwede rin po yung, uh, yung oxygen concentration natin 35 to 65 liters flow of 8 to 12 liters per minute respectively. Pero yung iba, uh, yung, yung atin, yung iba 40 to 60 at 5 liters per minute. Let's proceed to partial rebreathing mass. In the par partial rebreather, mass deliver oxygen concentrations about uh, 60 to 90 percent at 6 to 10 liters per minute. So, the oxygen reservoir bag that is attached allow the client to rebreathe about the first third of the exhaled air in the conjunctions with the oxygen. So, thus it increases increases the uh, the recycling expired oxygen. So, the partial re rebreather bag must not totally deplete during the inspirations to avoid the carbon dioxide build up. If this problem occurs, the nurse increases the liters of flow of oxygen so that the bag remains one-third to the half full. Okay? And then we have the non rebreathing mass. So the non rebreather mass delivers the highest oxygen. So that is 95 to 100 percent at 6 to 60 liters per minute. So uh, by means other than intubation or mechanical ventilations at liters. Okay? So, one-way bulbs on the mask and between the reservoir bulb and the mask prevent the room air and the client's exhaled air from the entering the bag. So, only the oxygen in the bag is 
inspired okay and then we have the and then we have the cuvette and that is a transparent uh, airtight canopy placed over a patient's head and shoulder within which a flow of oxygen can be maintained at a higher than the normal atmospheric level okay that is that one and then we have the oxygen tents or yung tinatawag natin na uh, paste tents okay so sa paste tent natin can replace oxygen mass when the mass are poorly tolerated by our clients so paste tent provide varying concentrations of oxygen for example 28 to 100 percent of oxygen at 8 to 12 liters so it convenient for providing the humidifications and oxygenation so however oxygen concentrations cannot be controlled okay so that is for low flow administrations devices okay so Ito yung kwan natin kanina, yung dinidiscuss ko kanina regarding sa ating oxygen system. We have the nasal cannula, sa ilong lang yan, okay? And then partial rebreathing, and then non-rebreathing, and then we have the uh, we have the simple face mask, ito siya. And then, ito naman yung uh, crofade. Okay, so these are the example of oxygen scent na makikita natin. Okay, punta naman tayo sa ating uh, high flow administrations devices. So, di ba, sinabi natin kanina na meron tayong dalawang klase ng delivery system, which is the high and then the low Okay, yung una natin dito that is the venturi mask that is the low concentrations of venture type mask is prepared for the client that have a COPD because it provides the accurate amount of oxygen. So it requires 2 to 3 liters per minute or 20% of the oxygen. So meron din tayong face mask doon. It's the same with the uh, low flow administration devices we have also the oxygen hood that can be used for low and high flow concentrations and then we have the incubator or isolate can be used for low and high flow of concentrations okay so ito yung nakikita natin na example ng ating uh, high delivery system of oxygen Okay, so nursing implementation lang natin dito. Uh, leakage cannot be detected since oxygen is colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas. It can also irritate our mucous membrane of the airway since oxygen is a dry, ga dry gas. And it can cause fire since oxygen support the convulsions. Okay, so in uh, nursing consideration during the administrations of our oxygen therapy, we need first one to assess our the signs and symptoms of hypoxemia. And then also, we need also to check the doctor's order. Okay, after the checking of the doctor's order, we need to position the patients in a semi polar positions, preferably to enhance the uh, lung, uh, lung expansions and then also we need to open the source of oxygen before the insertions of the oxygen devices because in the uh, to check the malfunctioning of the device and also we need to regulate the oxygen flow accurately so excessive administration of oxygen cause oxygen narcosis or yung tinatawag natin yung respiratory alkalosis and also we need to place a no smoking sign at the bedside and also we need to avoid use of oil greases alcohol and either near the clients receiving oxygen so the rationale to so further support the convulsions we need also check the electrical appliances before we use because a small spark may cause a fire if there is a leakage of oxygen 
avoid also the materials that generate static, static electricity such as uh, woolen blankets and synthetic uh, fabrics. Use uh, cotton blanket. Uh, humidify oxygen so place sterile water into the oxygen humidifier to uh, to dryness and irritations of the mucous membranes of the airways and also we need to prevent dryness and irritation of the mucous membrane provide good oronasal hygiene we need also to lubricate the nares with a water-soluble lubricant to soothe the mucous membrane. Assess effectiveness of the oxygen therapy. So number one, we need to check the vital signs, especially the respiratory rate. So kailangan natin makita yung yuk niya, that is the uh, normal breathing, which effortless and noiseless. Also need to note the quality of respirations, and we need also to evaluate the arterial blood gas, and then the Last one, we need to document all the, uh, during the administrations of the oxygen therapy. Okay, hypoxia. These are the alterations in the respiratory functions. Pag sinabi natin hypoxia, that is insufficient oxygen of tissues. Ang early signs natin, we have the tachycardia. So, that is the increased rate and depth of respirations and a slight increase in systolic BP or blood pressures. Ang late sign natin that is bradycardia, dips niya, decreased systolic BP, cup, and hemoptysis. So, yan yung makikita natin kapag insufficient oxygens of tissue or hypoxia. Okay. Uh, para makita natin yung hypoxia natin, di ba we have the early sign and the late sign. Pag sinabi natin a uh, late sign that is the bradycardia, that is uh, slower than the normal heart rate natin. So, what is the normal uh, heart rate ng adult? That is 60 to 100 beats per minute. Kapag early sign naman, that is the tachycardia, that is above 100. Okay, that is tachycardia, above normal. Okay, so wag kayo malilito doon between the tachycardia and the bradycardia. So, it talks about the heart rate, okay? And then, we have the dips niya dito sa late sign natin that is the difficulty of breathing. Nahihirapan siyang huminga, okay? Next one, the other clinical signs of acute hypoxia. We have the nausea and vomiting. We have the oliguria and anuria. Uh, pag sinabi natin oliguria, that is urina, urinary output uh, less than 400 ml per day or less than 20 ml per hour. So that is uh, oliguria. Pag sinabi naman natin anuria, that is no urine or without urine. Okay, and then we have also another sign. We have the headache, apathy, dizziness, irritability, and memory loss. So, yan yung ating clinical signs of acute hypoxia. Punta naman tayo sa clinical signs of the chronic hypoxia. So, we have the fatigue and lethargy, pulmonary ventilations increases, red blood cell count increases, Hemoglobin concentrations increases, and then we have the clubbing of fingers. Okay, so alteration in respiratory functions, we have uh, altered breathing pattern. So altered breathing pattern, pagdating sa ating uh, rate, we have tachypnea, that is a rapid uh, respiratory rate. Pagbradip niya naman, that is slow respiratory rate, up niya, that is cessation of breathing. Okay, huwag kayong malilito doon. And then, we have in the volume, in, we have hyperventilations, and then we have hypoventilations. In hyperventilations, that is the excessive amounts of air in the lungs, result from the deep, rapid respirations. While in the hypoventilations, that is the decreased rate and depth of respiration that is causes retentions of our carbon dioxide. 
Next, we have the rhythm. We have the kinest stroke. We have the cosmol, apneustic, and biots. In China stroke, that is marked rhythmic waxing and waning of respiration from the very deep to very shallow breathing and temporary apnea. And cosmol naman, that is increased rate and depth of respiration. So that yan is hyperventilation. And last of all, next one, we have amniotic, that is a prolonged gasping inspiration, uh, followed by very short uh, inefficient expirations. And then we have the biots, we have the swallow breaths interrupted by the apnea. Uh, ease of effort. In the ease of effort, we have the dipsnia and we have the orthopnia. In dipsnia, that is the difficult or labored breathing. In orthopnia, that is inability to breath except in the upright or sitting positions. And these are the possible nursing diagnoses in our oxygen and perfusions. Our oxygen and oxygenation and perfusions. We have the ineffective airway clearance, ineffective breathing pattern, decreased cardiac output, impaired gas exchange, activity intolerance, anxiety, and individual uh, coping. So, yan yung ating mga nursing diagnosis. So, this is our topic uh, for our uh, oxygenations and perfusion.